it's in your control, but it's not in your control. You know, there's a level of chance there. You're just gonna rely on what you've learned, what you know, and make the best decisions you can. But I feel like there's, there's some karma and luck in that. You know, if you're, if you're humble and you approach it the right way, you know, you're not gonna get yourself into a, into a terrible situation. It, it's, it's a level of confidence that sometimes can get you in trouble. I find that like a level of fear makes you pay attention. And without that, you know, I wouldn't be safe. You know, right before you go, you're busy doing all these things, getting it ready. And then for about, I don't know, 30 seconds before you run, it's just you. You know, take the stand out of the bike and you're just sitting there. Catch the sunrise in a minute. It's pretty cool out here. You know, there's just nothing. And the salt begins here, and then as soon as you get to the end of this, I think they call it the boat ramp, you wind up right on the salt. Kind of pump for up front now. Really? Yeah. The worst is the first day waiting. Alright. Let's do it. Morning. Just go out to your car and they'll, after the driver's meeting they'll line you up. Okay. You know, I've been building bikes for a few years now, and we've built a bunch of bikes that are beautiful. We thought about what's something else we could do to challenge ourselves that we could, you know, really enjoy and push ourselves. We came up with the idea to go land speed racing. It was something that I thought about because Bonneville, it's like a piece of America, and you know, it's not going to last forever. The salt, the salt's being mined. I said, you know, I'm going to build a bike from scratch, and we're going to set a record on our first try. Now I gotta fucking ride the damn thing. I kinda wanna just take it off the trailer. Let me make sure I'm in the right spot first. It feels really, feels like it's some good grip.
Just tell me when to stop. To clear the windshield? So the motorcycle we used was uh, was a Modus V4. It was a American sport touring bike. It was kind of an odd bike. You know, it was uh, it was a unique platform to start with. Unfortunately, after we decided to go with them, we bought one of their demo bikes, and they went out of business. So what I thought was going to be a collaboration with Modus ended up being me having to learn computers. I'm like I'm like a Magneto and car carb guy, and. Uh, you know, the, the project took on a whole nother level. The hard thing for me was, it was such a difficult bike to test. You know, you'd, you'd do something you didn't really know what you were doing and you couldn't know if it worked or not. Uh, whether it's aerodynamics or running the thing at speed as far as the tune goes, I mean, there's only so much you can get from a dyno. Yeah, it ended up being, so it's a turbocharged pushrod V4, all fuel injected, partial streamliner. I've never done any of this before. I really stepped outside my comfort zone on this one and I think that's why it feels real good to be sitting here now. You know, if it wasn't so hard to do, it wouldn't feel as good as it does. There was a hundred times the kind of people here for the speed we came. Bonneville's a special place. Like, it brings the most eccentric people from all over the world. I mean, I think this week it's one of the smaller events, so it's mostly the US. But, I mean, you will find some strange birds here. Like, intelligent as they come, but just from all parts of the spectrum. Uh, the only thing about Bonneville that is kind of sad is that, I mean, we're sitting on an inch of salt. And, you know, it's not getting any thicker. So, you know, what we see here, and you get here and you realize all the officials you know, for the most part, white hair. You know, it's it's a it's definitely a dying trend, and it's something that I hope will live on. But you know, looking at it and seeing what's happening with the salt, it's it's probably going to die in our generation. Okay, anybody that hasn't been here more than five years, you can put your hand down. Okay, ten years. How about twenty years? How about 30 years? 40 years? 50 years? No matter what you do, the liner always gets twisted when you take it off. <laughs> it's one of those where like you just you just wanna get it over with almost. This is a seven mile rocket. <laughs> and your balls will shrivel. Oh yeah, that, that, that thing Especially is if you hit a big hole in the ground. Oh shit. <laughs> So that's, that's our buddy Bobby on the, on the sidecar bike. So Bobby actually owns this bike. Oh yeah? That's, he's the, he's the Haas on the, on the oh, decal nice. right here. You know, with, with most of the clients, as soon as you're done with the bike, you know, you make sure it runs, make sure it's perfect. Don't scratch it, get it on the transporter and goodbye. Um, you know, but you know, working with Bobby, he sees more than the bike. I think it became apparent to him early on that there was far more to be gained investing in the people that build them and the stories that they have 
and what they do with the motorcycles. And I think what he really likes is he likes to see you step outside your comfort zone. He's like, okay, you're good at doing that. Let's see if you can do that. Bobby tells me when he walks through the museum, he doesn't see bikes. He sees the person that made them. You know, that's what he'll see when he sees the bike. Max loves his turbos. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes the whole thing sketchy. You know, because like the power is not linear now. It's like, it's like a rubber band. It's like. I bought these at the welding shop. I'm just I'm sweating. That'll do it. Yes, sir. The, the lift on your helmet, like your helmet is wanting to get lifted up the whole time, just the arrow. I guess the airspeed over here. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. And like, even when I slowed down, my, I lifted my head up a tiny bit and I, that, it almost ripped my fucking head off, man. I got a feeling it was going. Yeah? He's like, dude, you wanna go? I'm like, game time. <laughs> Five one six one. In the first mile, one ninety four. Okay. Okay. So you can qualify in the first mile. The first thing on here is quarter. It's from there to there. Okay. First mile is actually from the two to the three. And second mile is three to the four. Final mile is four to the five, and the exit is one hundred and thirty two foot. Okay. So you qualified for a record. So the only thing is, my that was also a licensing run for me to. It's okay. You can still qualify on a yeah. licensing. What, what license? What license were you looking for? Um, one seventy-five to two B license. Okay, that that's you're in you're in the range. You can go qualify ahead. while you're still licensing. So I have to go straight to impound now yes. if I want it. Yes. You got well, you got one hour, but you can't go to your pits because if you go to your pits, you're you're disqualified. So All right. and then we I have to wait till tomorrow to run again. Yes. yes. Okay. The only thing is, I didn't get my tank sealed before the run. Then don't go to impound. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I want to re-gear it anyway. Okay. Well, I'll do it again. Right. I didn't expect to do that, so. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. That's that's a pleasant surprise if you don't expect to qualify. Well, you know, I didn't turn qualify. on the GPS, so I didn't want to go too fast. <laughs> All right. Well, if you don't have a sealed tank, there's no sense in going to impound. Yeah. All right. Cool. We're gonna swap that gear up. Average speed 194 point something. So that's good. First mile 194. So anyway, I gotta, I gotta get the tank sealed, so it's official fuel to go for a record. Yeah, I didn't want to go to Impound anyway, man. I wanted to play with the bike a little more. So next run, next run we'll uh, get the A license and get the record. Even though we already beat that shit. Yeah, you got this. Yeah, in the back. The record in the class, because it was a push rod engine, wasn't that high. It was 182 miles an hour. And, you know, I feel like I built a bike that can go way faster than that, but doing that in reality is a whole different thing, you know. Whether your bike can go 250 or 210, you know, if it doesn't go straight or it shakes and slides, you know, you're still not getting it. The second run, I changed the gearing and I'm like, I'm just gonna sprinkle it on, here we go, like 220 miles an hour. You safe?
it just started, it, like the, the salt got weird and the bike just started going side to side. And Here I am again, thinking of my exit plan, like which side am I gonna bail out on? Death shake again. I thought, I'm like, dude, I'm like, here we go. I'm like, I'm crashing. Right. Oh, God, that was terrifying. But um, even coasting through the, the third mile, it still qualified for a record. Like, I don't want to, but I kind of want to see like one or two go, but yeah. I don't want to be behind a bunch of cars. Yeah, Maybe let one or two go. What they're gonna do is gonna move the racetrack over a half a width. Yep. Just so you get new ground to run on. What time is it? in the car last time as like a companion for the road trip. I feel like it's good luck. It's hard to do controlled experiments, right? Yeah. I did X, Y, Z, now I'm going to drop a tooth, and I, it has to do this, right? No. Yeah. So um, I was nervous today. And I was like, if I need to do that again, like I was, I was scared this morning. You know, I was, I was super to myself. <laughs> I was just envisioning myself sliding down the salt at 200 miles an hour, but I knew that that fear and that adrenaline was going to cause me to make the right decisions and, and to think fast. So are both these lanes new? No, just the left is new. Okay. We moved over half the width of the course, so the old left line is now the center. Okay. Okay, next up will be motorcycle five, one, six, one. You know, nothing can actually give me mental peace like riding a motorcycle fast because it requires your full attention. You know, I'm as ADD as they come, and so as soon as you click that first gear and the clutch goes out, all that fear goes away, and it just turns into paying attention to what you're doing. And yeah, you're, you're scared, you know, the bike's doing all this thing, but once you let the clutch out, all that anxiety, that's, that's behind you. Six, one.
skin scared. Perfect time for a wrap up interview. Yeah. That's why we came here. So, on something you built yourself, every single piece, you know, I wound up making from the body to all the machine parts and all those things and the chain whizzing around with a half link in it and you're just holding on. Um, I tell you, as soon as I saw the three mile marker, it was the best feeling in the world. You know, I had no idea how fast I was going until I saw the van coming and, you know, shake dumped a beer on my head. Get a weight on things like this. <laughs> <laughs> Crack that open for me, man. <laughs> no more driving for me. <laughs> it's all about the fat Katie's on the side. 207.9. Yeah. What are we came here for? Good. Yeah. Congratulations. Proud of you. It made it worthwhile. Proud of you. Very proud of you. Fantastic. Yeah, today we actually got it and it ran straight and it's such a cool feeling. You know, I, I, you think everyone thinks they've been like 190 on a bike because it says so on the Speedo, but to actually go, you know, I think we probably topped out close to like 210, 215 and it was like warp speed. I mean, for any gearhead, it's a bucket list to be able to come here and have your name in a Bonneville record book, you know, in any class, there's a million of them. It's special.